Welcome to Expanding Your Conference Experience, a webinar sponsored by the International Association of Emergency Managers Conference Committee. We offer this webinar so those of you who might be new to the association or to the annual conference can get the most out of your conference experience. I'm Mike Gavin, co-chair of the conference committee. I'm joined today by Dwayne Hagelgans, my co-chair, Donna Franklin and David Barber, our co-vice chair, and Julie Huss, the conference manager. If y'all would please say hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, everyone, glad you're here. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Hello, everyone, this is Julie. Thank you for coming. By the end of this webinar, you should have a much better idea of how the conference program is structured, as well as how to plan your time while with us in Grand Rapids. Please feel free to ask any questions as we go along. Simply type them into the question box and we'll do our best to answer them during the webinar. If you have a question that's a bit more specific or needs more time than we can offer during the webinar, we'll share our contact information at the end for folks to reach out. So here's our agenda. This is what we're going to cover in this webinar. Why I should go, what's happening, Emacs and what that's all about, speakers, the conference program, and other tips. What else do I need to know to make it a very successful conference? So, why should I go? Networking, to me, that's one of the most important things. This slide talks about peer networking, networking with your discipline, networking outside your discipline. I can tell you personally that when I first attended this conference many years ago back in Manhattan, Kansas, I didn't know anybody. And after going to several IAM conferences and meeting different people, not only emergency managers, in the government sector, but in the private sector, it just expanded my base of, of contacts throughout the country to where if I had an issue in Northern Colorado as an emergency manager, I knew someone down in Miami, Florida that had dealt with the same issue that I could contact to assist me, whether it be with response, recovery, building plans, or even mitigation. One of the most important reasons I come back year after year is to network and to learn some of the latest and greatest that's going on in our profession. Dwayne, Donna, David, do you want to chime in on this? Sure, I'll go if nobody minds. Uh, as Mike said, uh, I can remember my first conference or two being in the same boat and not really knowing anyone and, and slowly getting to build up a network of friends from across the nation and actually worldwide. And networking is not just in, important to me and my job here at the university, but also for the students and also in my, my collateral duties as a practitioner. Each year we bring about six to eight students who have the opportunity to also meet and get to know practitioners and perhaps even future employers, which is very important to our students. You know, in my field, based both teaching and as a practitioner, the connections I make at this conference not only give me real sources uh, for real world issues I may face, but also give me the opportunity to meet today and tomorrow's leaders so I can network for my students my program, especially myself. Donna? Hey, thank you. I've been going to IAM for over 20 years and I work for the National Weather Service. So it's so important for me to know what the hot topics are in the field of emergency management, uh, where, where you need help, where you're doing great, where we can partner with you in keeping um, our people and our infrastructure safe. I've made a lot of really good friends at the conference and just being involved on different caucuses and committees has really been such a great um, boost to my career and has just made it so rewarding. David. Thanks, Donna. Um, there are so many facets of what the IAM conference can provide for any individual. Uh, when I first started coming to the IAM conference, um, I, like everybody else has already said, it, I didn't know a whole lot of people, but these conferences are so great 
at giving you multiple opportunities in meeting people, providing you with fantastic learning experiences. You get to hear from leaders in every discipline of emergency management. You get to have opportunities where you can share ideas and make things happen. And IAEM as an organization gives you the opportunity and encourages you to grow and become part of the organization and grow the organization in ways that will help you personally, professionally, and within your discipline, and to grow a discipline uh, that meets the need of you and your fellow emergency managers uh, in the world. Uh, I personally have experienced the growth within the higher ed emergency management world, and now I'm experiencing the growth within a mental health focus within IAEM. And IAEM has been so supportive in both of those topics. Um, and that is just the way that IAEM is. So it's a wonderful organization and they will allow you to be as involved as you want to be. That's one of the things I find so rewarding about coming to the conference because that gives you that ability to find out where you want to grow and then you can grow. David makes some good points. We always talk about knowledge, skills, and abilities. And, and this is really one of the places where those, uh, the, the groundwork, the building blocks to that gets established. As, as David mentioned, when I first came, it was my first, didn't know much about IEM. I ended up serving for six years as vice president of Region 8 got on the conference committee and now I've been conference chair for five years, something I never ever dreamed of when I came to my first conference. So the other thing I'd like to, to be sure and mention is we have a testimonial video. Um, it's several videos from people on the home page of the conference website. Um, we always uh, set this up at our conferences to listen to and record past attendees talk about why they attend the IAEM uh, annual conference. So if you go to iaemconference.info, um, you'll be able to listen to some more testimonials from uh, other folks that have attended, both members and non-members. So I'm gonna talk about what's happening, some of the events before, during, and after the conference. The IAEM conference is not just about the three days with the speakers, but also about the opportunities before, during, and after the conference. You can visit the conference website under the program pages to see what pre and post conference training is being offered as part of the conference. And there still are some seats available, so you can still sign up. We also have tours of local facilities to see some of the real world emergency management that's going on, uh, some of the local emergency operations centers, plus various deals throughout Grand Rapids for your downtime around the conference. So. Those evenings, maybe a day before, a day after, if you stick around Grand Rapids, uh, figure out what some of those deals are local businesses are giving us. We're proud to have events uh, for students and new or transitioning emergency managers, in which we begin the networking process we were discussing earlier, while also having the chance to meet a lot of the IEM leadership from various capacities to further discover what IEM is all about and how you can get involved as a member. I think it's probably one of the most important things that we do uh, making sure that our, our new members and our younger members are having the opportunity to meet IEM leadership and find out what this great organization is all about. At the beginning of the conference, we have a networking event that will help get you into the groove of the conference and meet new friends while reconnecting with old friends. And during the conference in the AMX, we'll have opportunities for you to visit many of the vendors that we work with on a day in and day out basis while networking and enjoying some food and beverage. The opportunities are boundless before, during, and after the conference, so I hope you join us. So the first thing we have is the First Step Mixer. If you're a student or new to emergency management or IEM and you're looking to break through, you're invited to a very special event that is just for you. This year we'll be throwing IEM's inaugural First Steps Mixer, which will provide you an opportunity to meet IEM leadership across the organization, like I was speaking about earlier. You'll also have the opportunity to mingle and network with seasoned members who represent a wide variety of emergency management professions. 
This year, we have some fun games and prizes in store for you as we work to build a stronger and resilient partnership across the profession. This is a great opportunity to meet others and carry those relationships over to the welcome party. So the welcome party, which we have every year, this year will be again in the museum in Grand Rapids. This museum features world-class exhibits on history, nature, cultural heritage, Native Americans, and more. If you were with us at IEM 2018, when we hosted it at this museum, you know this was a fabulous event and you won't want to miss it this year. This is your opportunity to again network, see old friends, meet new friends, and begin the conference on a very high note as you stroll through this amazing museum overlooking the riverfront with views of downtown Grand Rapids. We're all hoping to see you there because we'll all be there. Tickets are included if you have a full conference registration. If you have another registration type, you can add tickets to your registration. This is an event you certainly don't want to miss. It has all the excitement of a Super Bowl party plus unbelievable displays, and it's reserved just for us. And it's your first great opportunity to meet Mr. Mike Gavin. <laughs> there is, uh, speaking of things you don't want to miss, uh, the Monday lunch and awards is really great. And make sure you come early because the seats fill up fast. The lunch starts at 12 p.m. and it will be served buffet style, and it's included in the, in your registrations, all registrations for the conference. We will also have the 2021 awards competition winner announced during this lunch. It's a really fun event and it's a great way to start getting to know other folks who are at the conference. Some of our keynote and plenary speakers that we wanted to highlight um, that we have attending this year and speaking, of course, Deanne Criswell, the new FEMA administrator, Dr. David Tightly, the former chief operation officer with NOAA and a retired admiral from the U.S. Navy, retired. Uh, Abish Parashaw, he's an author and a great motivational speaker. We have Dr. Chris Rodriguez, the director of Washington, D.C. Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency. We're fortunate to have Captain Kevin Sweeney, who's a commander with the uh, Emergency Management Homeland Security uh, Division, part of the Department uh, and State Director of Emergency Management for Michigan State Police. We have Richard Clark, President-elect of the American Meteorological Society, and we have Michael Sharon, the Acting Director, Individual and Community Preparedness Division, National Preparedness Directorate and uh, Department, uh, basically the superintendent at EMI is a, a short, short term uh, title for him. Um, some of these speakers uh, you're very well aware of and some of them I think you will be very surprised uh, and, and grateful to listen to their presentations. On, on top of our uh, keynote and plenary speakers, we also have what's known as spotlights. Um, our spotlights are Tuesday morning from uh, 8 to 9.30. Um, these are areas that instead of just a one hour breakout, we felt like because of the subject or the speaker, we needed to give them a little bit more time. So the four that we currently have scheduled um, are career workshop, looking for a job in all the right places. And that will be uh, handled by Eric Gall and Maribel Street. Um, those of you that are new or just getting into emergency management, maybe changing careers or getting ready to come out of college with your degree, I would highly recommend this presentation. Um, we also have um, a think tank, um, EMI Anywhere, Future Directions for the Emergency Management Institute. As most of you know, the Emergency Management Institute in Emmitsburg, Maryland, is where a lot of the formal training from FEMA uh, to emergency managers takes place. And Dr. Jeffrey Stern uh, will be presenting along with uh, Rich Serino. Um, so that should be an excellent presentation. And then we have the private sector and governmental collaboration to safeguard um, the homeland. Uh, we have Lieutenant David Eddy and uh, Lieutenant James Ellis 
uh, from the Michigan State Police. They're going to be kind of uh, addressing some cyber issues um, throughout uh, Michigan and the nation. And then they're going to be talking about the importance of intelligence gathering and why we have fusion centers um, throughout the United States. So I would highly encourage you to uh, continually look at uh, the website as, as some of these presentations uh, may change. We're hoping to add a couple more to it. The Envision talks are one of the highlights of the conference. It's been the most popular session for a few years. They're uh, fashioned after the TED Talks, and this year we have seven fantastic speakers who will be talking on topics that, are, that they're passionate about. So the session is Tuesday, 10.15, in the main session room, and you won't want to miss it. Participants in the poster showcase have entered in either a competitive or non-competitive division. This has been growing for the last couple of years, and it's been very exciting as we see uh, more practitioners and students putting forth posters of research. The competitive division participants have participated in a virtual evaluation session over the last couple of days to see if their poster meets the standards of gold, silver, or bronze recognition. Ribbons will be affixed to the posters in the competitive division, denoting the recognition they received. In addition, on Tuesday, November 19th, during October 19th, during the morning break, participants will be standing by their poster ready to answer any questions regarding the research or findings about their poster. Also, several IEM caucuses and committees will be displaying the great work they've accomplished over the last couple of years. This is your chance to find out how to get more involved in the areas you are interested in and learn more about IEM caucuses and committees. Contact information is available on all the posters and you can also ask any ambassador how to get in contact with IAM leadership to get more involved in anything that's of interest to you. Make sure that I unmute. New this year, we've got a series of presentations from FEMA that we've titled FEMA Updates. It's going to be on Sunday, October the 17th, starting at noon and running to 4 p.m. You can see the agenda here. Um, Starting at 12 noon, EMPP looks to the past to shape the future of emergency management that will transition to at one o'clock, evacuation and shelter in place planning, the new FEMA, research and resources to help jurisdictions plan for and coordinate this critical responsibility. After that, we'll go at two o'clock to preparedness grants in the time of COVID-19. That's something that we all should really be thinking about. And then we'll close it off at three o'clock with leveraging the National Exercise Program. And if you haven't been involved or you don't know about the National Exercise Program, I would highly recommend that if you don't go to any of the others, you go to this one because the National Exercise Program is a marvelous program that can provide you with a lot of things to both think about and become involved in. This FEMA update series should be something that you really wouldn't want to miss. All right, so um, Embark, um, something that uh, Duane mentioned earlier, um, come join us for the fourth annual offering of Embark. That's Career and Emerging uh, Professionals Day on Sunday, October 17th. Um, as the slide says, it goes from uh, noon until four o'clock. And really what Embark is, what we've tried to design it to be, and I think we're really there, it's your introduction to IAEM and the annual conference. Whether you're a student, a scholar, new practitioner, maybe all three, as an emerging professional, you'll find something of value. Embark brings you interesting speakers. Uh, beneficial topics, and the opportunity to learn more about the emergency management field. Embark gives you the information on navigating academics and practice to successfully transition to the workplace, including networking, identifying mentors, and even more. I'd like to speak to the agenda for just a little bit. From 12 to 12.35, we're gonna have a welcome and introduction to IAEM. And that's gonna feature 
several members from the IAEM leadership team talking about the organization, how it's broken down, some of the opportunities that you have to get involved in IAEM. From 12.45 to 1.30, we have Dr. Larry Porter, an adjunct associate professor at Arkansas Tech University, is going to be speaking to looking back to research and looking forward to using it. That's one of the issues that, that I have found as a practitioner in the field is that I don't know what I don't know and the researchers don't know what I need to know. And I think he'll be talking about research and the importance and how to effectively apply it out in the field. At 1.45, we have a uh, panel discussion that will be moderated by Michael Tiener, the emergency management planner for James City County in Virginia. And the title of this is How to Set Yourself Up for success within the emergency management profession. What we've done is put together a group of four panelists that are going to address some questions about how they got into the business, uh, what some of their greatest assets were, what maybe they wish they knew before they got in it. But the idea here is to open this up for you to ask questions to this panel. We have Lorraine Schneider, um, certified emergency manager and the program manager in charge of training and exercise design for the Walt Disney Company. We have Matt Green, director of uh, engagement, uh, manager epicenter deployment support unit at Epicenter Innovations. Uh, he's going to be talking about the private uh, consulting sector. Then we have Carol Sewak, associate professor at North Dakota State University. She's going to be addressing uh, higher education and opportunities in that field. And then myself, a recently retired emergency manager from the government sector with the city of Fort Collins, Colorado. <clears throat> so we hope you'll attend that. We think it'll be a, a real good panel discussion. Uh, and the idea is not for us to talk about what we've done, but to answer your questions. We'll wrap this up from three to four o'clock with a presentation titled, Is Your Networking Not Working? by Diane Logston. Um, she's a uh, Illinois professional emergency manager and president of the Logsdon Group. When, when this is over, at 4.15 to 5.15, will be that first steps mixer that Dwayne was talking about. We'll all depart together and join other EMs for an evening of networking with IEM leadership, senior members who represent a wide variety of emergency manager professions. This year, we have some fun games, a uh, couple icebreakers, some prizes in store for you as we work to build strong and resilient partnerships across the profession. To show how much IAM cares about the profession, we realize that the market is very competitive. So there are two opportunities listed on this slide that will hopefully help people with their careers. There's a career workshop on Tuesday the 19th from 8 to 9.30 a.m. that will show how emergency managers can make themselves more competitive in today's very tough job market. And there's information there on how to find the right job for your interest, outlining strategies, for making yourself more marketable and crafting an effective resume, discussing ways to prepare for interviews and a lot of information in that workshop. As an extension of that, during the Emex breaks, there is a resume review. You can sign up for that at the IAM bookstore and during the Embark program and if you bring your resume, you will have a chance to take your resume and get it reviewed during the conference, and you'll get tips on how to improve your resume, make it more marketable, and give yourself the best opportunity 
to present yourself to prospective employers so that you can have the best opportunity to make your career everything it can be in the profession that we all love, emergency management. And then there's Emex. It says up here it's a noun, but it might also well be a verb too, because there's a lot of action going on in Emex. It's the one-stop shop for information about emergency management, but it's a great opportunity to see the latest in technology, to find out about training opportunities, to see the latest business solution, and to find out about partnerships in the world of emergency management. There are presentations from organizations, from vendors, et cetera. There are great opportunities to network with everybody in our field there, along with our peers, individuals within our organization and our profession. And it's also a place where several exciting events will happen but I'm not going to spill the uh, beans on that right now because Mike's going to talk about that in more detail a little bit later on in this webinar. So I'll let Mike talk about that a little bit later on. The conference ends on a high note with a presidential banquet and award ceremony. And if you purchase the full registration, the banquet is included. Otherwise, you can purchase a ticket for it. Besides enjoying a really great sit down dinner with friends and colleagues, we use this time to toast our outgoing and incoming board and to recognize the new AEM CEM holders. And it's always a lot of fun. It's a great event with really high energy. And don't miss the reception before that begins at six o'clock. It will be located in the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel Ambassador Ballroom. And the dress, code is um, business attire and a little fancier if you want. These three events listed on this slide support the IAEM Scholarship Fund. This provides scholarships through a competitive process to students working towards degrees in emergency management, disaster management, or closely related fields of study. The Basket Bonanza is a raffle of themed baskets which are on display in the registration area. You buy tickets, drop the ticket in a box at the basket that you want to be in that particular raffle. The IAEM silent auction and live auction items may be previewed online or live at the conference in their designated locations near the registration area. The silent auction, you actually go by, look at the product, and then you can write your bid down uh, with your name and phone number. The live auction starts at six o'clock, and David was referring to this, in the back of the Emex hall. They will have um, hors d'oeuvres back there that are included in the price of your conference ticket, and they will have uh, drinks for sale. Um, great, great evening, uh, great bidding that goes on. Uh, you, you do a lot of networking and camaraderie. Uh, it's, it's a great, great time. Uh, and keep in mind that that'll be on Tuesday evening from 6 to 7.30 in the back of the Emex Hall. Detailed information regarding bidding, tickets, the drawings, and more can be found under the IAEM conference website in the very near future. There's just so much to, to cover and so much going on at the conference. Um, the book signings, that's always a lot of fun. Our opening plenary speaker, Abish, is the author of Improvise to Success and the Amazon best-selling Say Yes and Dr. Heather Beal is the author of four award-winning books and is the chair of the IAEM USA Children and Disasters Caucus. And Chuck Casto is one of our featured speakers on Wednesday afternoon at 1.30. His book, Station Blackout, Inside the Fukushima Nuclear Disaster and Recovery. 
check out the program for the exact location of the book signings, and you can purchase the books during the book signings, or you can purchase them ahead of time at the, at the IEM bookstore, which will be in the eMix. Come out and join some of the fun networking events for the conference attendees. On Friday, October 15th, the Grand Rapids Griffins invite all IEM attendees to join them for the 25th Grand Rapids Griffin season home opener. You'll see Mike and I there for sure. Enjoy specially priced tickets to the night's Griffin game at 7 p.m. Plus enjoy $2 beers and $2 hot dog specials that run from 6 to 8 p.m. Then on Saturday the 16th, you can come join other conference attendees for a tour of Spectrum House, three hospitals located in downtown Grand Rapids, including its headquarters for emergency management. During this tour, you'll see clinical areas of each of the three hospitals, and its fully dedicated system command center. Members of the system's emergency management team will provide a tour of the tier one special pathogens unit, patient decontamination, and describe how its system command center evolved during the COVID-19 pandemic. Come see how this healthcare system is at the leading edge of organizational situational management. Another one of those great tours we have for you. And then on the 17th, join local beer Cicerone and beer podcaster, Pat McBride, and local healthcare emergency manager Mark Van Dyke in a fun, lighthearted evening of discussion and beer tasting. Again, Mike and I will be there. Your night will include a short presentation, beer tasting, laughter, and a chance to visit the heart of Beer City USA. Founders Brewing. What beer is best to have in your cellar for your next at-home tornado drill? Come find out on Sunday, October 17th. Fee is $35, which includes a fee, a flight, I'm sorry, a flight of beer and light refreshments. Attendees will meet at Founders Brewing in Grand Rapids. So here are the opportunities to get involved in the association in the areas that you find most interesting. One of the themes that you've probably heard from all of us on this uh, presentation today is, you know, you really need to get involved. This is your organization. So the full program list of all these meetings, uh, and none of these meetings are closed meetings, so you can go check them out. You can find on the website or eventually on the app. You can figure out who you want to join by looking at the posters we mentioned earlier also. Again, we have various caucuses and committees. You can come check out what they're doing, and we also have the, the regional meetings. So some of the caucus committee meetings are, are on Sunday throughout the course of the day. On Monday from 5 to 6 are the IAM USA regional meetings. On Tuesday from 5 to 5.45 are some more caucus committee meetings, as well as Wednesday from 4 to 4.45. So figure out what your passion is. Come get involved, uh, come stop in by one of the meetings and see what we have to offer. All right, so the conference program, all that we're talking about here in this webinar and more, you can find in our detailed online program. So this can be found at iaemconference.info underneath the program pages. You'll see here kind of highlighted there on the left under the complete conference program page. In here, there's four ways to view it. You can view it by program, which is basically a schedule of events chronologically. You can search by speakers. You can search by event type, like is it a breakout session? Is it a plenary? Is it Emacs? Is it an optional event? Or you can search by interest area, like if you're interested in healthcare or higher ed, for example. There's several ways to figure out everything that you're interested in to kind of tailor the program to yourself and what you want to attend. So go here to this page, click on one of these buttons, and that will take you to the next group pages. So here I, I is a, a view of, if I clicked on view by program, which basically is your schedule at a glance. The top here, you'll see all the dates. Those first few dates are kind of funny. We see why we are Tuesday, September 14, which is already passed. That was part of our early edition speaker series. Those were webinars that were recorded. Um, and available to conference attendees as of September 13th. Those are all there on the website, uh, the dates and what's coming up. Um, still yet to come, we have uh, five more of them, I believe. And then you start on Friday, October 15th, which is our first pre-conference training uh, courses that start going on. So you click on each date, it pulls up here this kind of schedule chronologically by time. Um, and if you click on the see more here on the right, you'll find out more information in detail, which is my next screen, which will show you, if you click on the see more, it tells you exactly what it is, gives you 
detailed information about the abstract or description about the session or event. Again, the date and time, the event type, whether it's a breakout or a tour or a training, um, interest areas, and then also the speakers. If you want to click on the speaker and find out, for instance, right here where David is from, you can click on that and it will give a detailed biography of the speaker. Again, this is up to date, it's live, so any changes that are made are instantaneously, so you have the most up-to-date information about the conference by looking in here. And also, all the detail, do you want to find out more about what's going on based on what we talked about in this webinar? Lastly, while on site, we are, yes, having an IAM mobile app again. Information will be sent out here the next couple of weeks for everyone to download it to their phone. Once it's downloadable uh, on your phone, you don't need the internet to take a look at what's going on on Monday at 11 o'clock. It's already on your phone, uh, so you don't need internet. You just need internet to download it. But it's a great thing. It has everything that's going on in the conference, the program, the speakers, the tours, the events, maps. It has everything and more that you need to know about the conference. For those of you who've been to IAM before, you know this is your go-to tool once on site especially when I find out what room you need to go to. Very important for the next session that's coming up. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, what are ambassadors? Well, they're attendees, helping attendees have a more robust experience. As you know, we're customer service focused at IAEM. So ambassadors are members who have been to the conference for at least a couple of years. They will have maps, uh, they'll have listings. They're folks that if you have a question, um, we want you to feel free to ask them. You can really ask anybody that's at the conference anything you choose to, but someone wearing an ambassador button is someone that can provide you some information, even what time lunch is, breakfast, where there's coffee, restrooms. So we highly encourage you to ask folks that are wearing the ambassador buttons any questions you have. These folks will be located at the registration desk. Um, they'll be in the hallways during the conference. Um, so again, that's what our ambassadors are. So challenge coins, yes. Here is this year's limited edition challenge coin. And the cost is only $15. There's limited quantities. They're going to be on sale at the IAEM bookstore that Donna mentioned earlier. And again, we only have a limited supply. So my recommendation is, if you're someone that collects challenge coins, be sure and get yours either on Sunday or on Monday. So the IAEM store, all right, we're gonna be up and running this year. There'll be IAEM merchandise, including this year's challenge coin that I mentioned, various books available, as well as signings that Donna mentioned by Avish Parashaw. He'll have both of his books there. Uh, Dr. Heather Beal, who writes books for children uh, dealing with disasters, will have four of her books there. Um, I believe a couple of those may even be in, uh, in a foreign language. And then, of course, Chuck Castro. So this is located in the exhibit hall near the registration area. All right, we're going to go over a few more items that are some typical concerns for new conference attendees. And we want to make sure that you understand what to do. So we're going to cover them on the next few slides. Um, some of you are probably already registered for the conference. You may not have known some of these events that we're talking about here and you want to attend. So what you need to do if you already registered is to log into im.org. The directions are here. Go click on your dashboard. Go to My Registrations. Click on it. When you see the 2021 Annual Conference, click on View Registration. That will basically take you up to your kind of schedule of what you've added to your registration. So in there, search for the event or training that you've heard that you, you have not registered for yet, click on it and complete the registration process. If you have not already registered for the event, I highly suggest you do. Just log in to im.org, actually go to imconference.info, top right-hand right corner of every page, 
as you can see here by this red arrow on this screen, is register now. Click on that and they'll take you to the registration page to log in and to register. Our conference location this year is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, as you know, but it's at the DeVos Place Conf Convention Center and the hotel is the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel. That's where everything is going to be happening. And uh, if you haven't made your reservation yet, the deadline is September 24th of this year or until the block is sold out. So please go to the lodging page on the conference website and book your hotel room. Uh, most of us have already done that, but if you haven't, Please go, sir, go there as soon as you can and book your hotel room so that you've got a great place to stay. It's marvelous. It's right at the convention center and uh, you'll have a fab, fantastic time. Uh, Grand Rapids is a great city. This is a great convention center. It's a fantastic hotel and you will be glad that you came to our conference. All right, so we're all emergency managers and business casual is definitely where we live, right? So you don't need that $600 suit or dress. Just come and be comfortable. For most of the activities that we have, you're going to be uh, sitting in rooms or walking around the EMX. And so come in that business, business casual. But on Wednesday, it's time to show off your organization, your agency, your school, where you're from. So on Wednesday, make sure you proudly come showing off your quote unquote team colors. Under the hotel and travel pages, this page lists all the local dining, nightlife, arts and museums, breweries, family fun, fishing and water sports, golf, shopping, sightseeing, tours, spas, and everything else. You can see more and do more in Grand Rapids in one day than you can in one week in other cities. There is an endless array of things to do and everything is close and convenient to the hotel and convention center. Grand Rapids is a really walkable city with downtown Grand Rapids offering more than 100 lounges and restaurants and with, with, that are within walking distance of the hotel. And because because there are so many great things to do, IAM has managed to provide a lot of discounts and deals to the conference attendees. Uh, Grand Rapids has worked with us. There are a lot of great things at restaurants, attractions, and other businesses. These discounts are not available to the general public. They're only for the IAM conference attendees. You can redeem your discounts by presenting the digital coupon on your phone. It's that easy. You don't have to download an app. Your passport will be instantly delivered to your phone via text and email and is ready to use immediately. To get your discounts, click on this QR code found on the conference website under the hotel and travel page or sign up by clicking on the link on that page. It's really that simple. And we really need your feedback. The secret to having a continually great conference is to hear from our attendees on what worked well, what we should think about to redo and what you want to see going forward. On the app, there are two main areas that we seek your opinion on. Speaker evaluation, you can see that on the left. When you attend a session, we want to hear your feedback. You can rate the session with the speaker evaluation. And then what we really also want you to provide us with information on is the overall conference evaluation. That's also on the app. And it really lets us know how you felt about the conference overall. Please fill out this part because it helps us 
to prepare as we move from Grand Rapids this year to Savannah in 2022 so that we can not only have a great conference in Grand Rapids, but we can have an even better conference when we move to Savannah next year. So think about evaluations of the speakers and the conference and help us help you. Okay, you'll find all the information about the conference on our website, iaemconference.info. Um, again, we've tried to give you a, a pretty good snapshot of uh, what's in front of you, um, coming to Grand Rapids, coming to the conference, uh, getting involved with uh, the organization. Um, so at this time, I'd like to see if there's any questions out there from anyone. Julie, if you want to moderate that and see if there's any. Yes, um, there are a couple of questions here. So question regarding the rates of the hotel. So there's two rates at the hotel. One is the I am discounted rate, um, which is cheaper than a rate that you would get if you just called up and made reservation yourself. I am negotiates a big block of room to offer our conference attendees a discount. The government rate is a lower rate. Um, there are a few nights still available. To get that rate, I would suggest you call the hotel directly, as many a few of the nights have already sold out. Um, and if you try to book online, sometimes it will tell you that it's full, the hotel is full, but it is not full. Um, it just the nights that you might be selecting at the government rate might be full. So if you are in the government rate area, you want to call the hotel directly. Otherwise, go to iamconference.info and the hotel and lodging pages and click there to make your reservation directly online. Um, so the question is, is there anywhere where folks with disabilities should check in? I've seen sort of ADA enhances on other entrants and other events. So the conference facility is ADA compliable. Um, if they have any questions, they can reach out to us directly and we can provide more information on it. Also the hotel, the Amway brand, We'll also be able, you can contact them directly or actually just email one of us and we can provide the information um, more for you. Let's see. So Mike, do you want to talk about um, our COVID policies a little bit? Sure. Um, what, we are, what we are currently doing is following not only the state of Michigan, but the county, and I believe it's Kent County, as well as the city of Grand Rapids. We are following their established COVID protocols, and I know that they are following what CDC's recommendations are. What we are, are going to be asking all attendees um, currently, and again, um, Focus on the IAEM conference website for any changes, but we're going to be asking folks that while they are inside attending the conference, that they wear a mask. Now, speakers will be at least six feet away from you, if not 10 to 15, and they will not be wearing a mask so you can hear them, but we're going to ask all participants to wear a mask, um, other than while you are eating or taking a drink of something. And, and those are established protocols that I believe are being followed um, through, throughout most of the United States right now. Uh, so that's currently where we're at. Julie, I don't know of any others right offhand that have been established yet. No, but I want to add to that that I am as ordered um, several, like 1,500 IAEM masks. So we will have those available um, for conference attendees in addition to ones they might, might also bring with them. We also have some disposable masks there as well. So you know that you can grab a IAM and show your IAM pride during the conference. Uh, let me see more questions. Um, so someone was asking about the dates of the conference and a wait list. So the dates of the conference um, are pre-conference, the 15th, 16th, and 17th. 
whereas my cohorts here talked about we have training courses, optional events, um, some caucus committee meetings are going on. On the 18th, on Mondays, we start the main part of the conference where we have our plenary sessions and breakout sessions. That goes Monday through Wednesday, and we end on Wednesday with the presidential banquet and awards ceremony. And then on Thursday, the 21st, we have post-conference training also. Um, there is not a wait list for any of the sessions. There are a few wait lists for some of the training courses that have sold out. And that information, if you look on our conference website, is available as which ones are at this point in time. Um, Mike, you want to talk more about what what is Logo Day? Try that again. What is Logo Day? Logo Day. Yeah. What what Logo Day is is um, and and I think it was Dwayne or David touched on that. Um, most of the time, I mean, you can wear your logo if you have a uniform or department shirt. You can wear it every day. Um, some people like to dress down a little or even dress up. Um, so what we do is we ask people on logo day to wear their logo uh, from you know their agency. Now with me, I'm I'm retired. Um, I do a little part-time teaching for an agency down in Texas. But heck, I may be wearing um, my favorite. Uh, NFL football team jersey that day. It's a day that you can kind of either show off your agency uh, for the most part, or maybe if you're like me, retired, maybe you want to show off one of your favorite sports teams. There really aren't any uh, steadfast set rules for that, but it's an opportunity for other people to go, oh, there's somebody from Arkansas State University. I went to school there. Maybe I'll go over and say hi to them, do a little networking, find out who they are. And the day that is on Wednesday, um, October 20th. So someone is asking about transportation to and from the extra events and the hockey game. Anybody want to touch on that one? Dwayne, we went last year. You want to talk about that? Sure. I just want to make sure I'm unmuted because you know how that works. Um, so the hockey game is within walking distance. In fact, you, you, uh, don't even have to go outside. You can go from the hotel over to the hockey arena. It's right there, right where we're at. Uh, as far as the other events, though, Julie, I don't believe that we have transportation to go other than for like the tours, correct? Yes, the um, the other events, the, the Spectrum Health Tour and the Emergency Talk Dinners, which are sold out, um, and Founders Beer, they are all within walking distance as um, one of my co I can't remember who it was, was talking about how walkable Grand Rapids is. It is really walkable. Um, so the Grand Public Mug Museum, which is, a, which is right across the bridge, is like 0.2 miles from the hotel. Um, the Emergency Talk Dinner is the same thing. It's 0.2 miles, just a different direction. Everything is really walkable. If you want to grab an Uber or a Lyft, um, to get there, that's easy to do as well. But as I said before, it's really walkable. Um, so you should be able to um, do everything. And if not, just grab, call some, uh, an Uber or Lyft to get there. Yeah, I was, I was there for a week the last time we were there. And I literally got dropped off at the hotel. I walked everywhere. I was all over Grand Rapids. And then I got back in the uh, shuttle to get back to the airport. No, uh, no car necessary. Yeah, I I totally uh, agree with Dwayne. Um, you know, the the walk, uh, you didn't even have to go outside to go to the hockey arena. Um, on one side of the hotel is the uh, Grand Rapids Museum. On the other side of the hotel is a convention center. On the third side of the hotel, uh, walking across the road, is the uh, President uh, Gerald Ford uh, museum and library. So again, pl plenty of things to see and do uh, right within the area, within three, four blocks of the convention center and the hotel. Well, at this point in time, we don't have any more questions. Do you all want to wrap up? 
Yeah, if, if we have no more questions, um, I thank everybody um, for attending this webinar. Um, we hope it's been helpful. Um, as Dwayne mentioned earlier, we look forward to seeing and meeting you all in Grand Rapids. And I'll ask uh, Donna, Dwayne, and David, and Julie if they have anything else to add. Nope, I think just uh, you'll have our contact information on the next slide. And uh, feel free to reach out to any of us. That's what we're here for. And we all look forward to seeing all of you in Grand Rapids. Hope to see you all in less than a month. Hope you found this informative and useful. And we can't wait to see you in Grand Rapids where we're going to have a fantastic time. Thank you all for joining us today. And as they've said, if you want to reach out to any of them on here's their contact information, feel free to reach out to us at any time with questions you may have. Look forward to seeing you in less than a month.